Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Aries EDC. Today, I wanna to talk to you about these two knives. So I got these in, uh, it's been about a week and I've been carrying both of them on and off. Um, not too terribly much, but enough to try to get a feel of them and I've been playing with them a whole lot. And so this is gonna be kind of my short term review on these guys. This is not something I'm going to do very often as far as reviewing knives, but I like to see things that maybe are a little bit different that you guys don't always get to see. So I want to talk to you guys about these two knives, a little bit more about pickled steel um, and what they're offering. And uh, just so you guys get to know these knives, um, I'm hoping to have the opportunity to pass these along to some other people, but we will see. So let's see. Let's go ahead and talk about this one first. Um, this is the Rhino. So this is the Pickled Steel Rhino designed by Miguel Hetzel. Um, and to be honest, right up front guys, I, you know, I haven't really looked up the designers except for one or actually the owner of Pickled Steel reached out to me and let me know about one. But um, Miguel Hetzel design, also designed this, but he also designed the Capo Lovaro, which was the, uh, the first pickled steel knife that I was able to handle. And I was pretty impressed with that one. And again, I'm pretty impressed with this one. Um, so let's talk about it. First of all, let's talk about some of the specs on this knife. Um, let's pull out the ruler so you guys can see. Um, their website <clears throat> does give specs, but of course, uh, everything is in not, uh, it's in metric system and us here in the U S we have to be barbaric, I guess, and have the, <laughs> the other system. So we're going to talk in inches today instead of in millimeters. So. This knife is hovering right at eight inches, maybe a little bit more than eight inches overall. The blade length is about three and three quarters, and that's about right to the choil, the back of the choil right here, um, to the actual blade. Uh, the sharpened blade is roughly about three and a half. It's right at three and a half inches. So very good. Uh, the steel is 14C, sorry, my camera is not picking up this. There's too much light in here. 14C, 28N, uh, again, the Rhino. Um, nice orange G10. There is also a micarta version of this knife. The flipper tab isn't too pronounced. It's not too much of, I guess, what people would consider a pocket pecker. Um, but it's not too bad. Uh, the G10 is contoured, so you, got, you get the nice contoured G10. It is, is on ceramic, or it's on, it's on ceramic caged bearings, and the action is very good. So I will say that the action is very good. Um, let me take this camera and zoom out just a little bit for you guys, because this is such a big knife. Um, so the action, Thumb flicking it is good. It doesn't take much for the knife to get close. It's such a big blade that the weight just kind of takes care of itself. Um, but overall, it's not a heavy blade. Um, it's really not. Uh, let's see, on their website, it does give what the weight of it is. I wish I had a scale to so you guys could do it. 105 grams um, is what they have listed for the weight. Um, it doesn't take much to get this to flip. You can see I'm just light switching it and I'm not using any wrist and that blade is coming out no problem. So let's look at some size comparisons. So we have our Rhino. Let's see, first of all, let's do the Rat 2. <laughs> so obviously much bigger than the Rat 2. Uh, let's look at our Civivi Elementum, uh, line up the pivots, 
And uh, Civivi Elementum is a three inch blade, so you can see it's much larger than obviously the Civivi Elementum. And the Para 3, um, <laughs> again, dwarfs the Para 3. So this is a very big knife. Um, the only other knife that I have in my collection that gets close to it is the Orion Cetus. Uh, I'll put that up here so you guys can see. The Orion Cetus is close, but the Rhino is still overall just a tad bit bigger than the Orion Cetus. So that gives you a good idea of the blade. Now the blade itself is just about the same size as the Rhino, but that gives you an idea of how big this thing actually is. And we could talk a little bit about that blade shape. So this, the first thing I saw when, or thought of when I ha saw the blade shape was a knife that I have from Honey Badger. And they have their, what they call their worn cleaver. And you could kind of see the resemblance in there. Uh, it is somewhat similar, but I don't know why. I wanted to show off this. I love Honey Badger, but anyway. Um, let's talk a little bit more about this. So I've been fidgeting with it. I've been playing with it. It's very, very fidgety, but it's big. And it does give you a full four finger grip. At least I would be <laughs> that big, I would hope. Your thumb, you could either push back here where you do have a little bit of jimping, or you could actually fall as nicely if you really want to reach forward with it and control the blade up here. Um, obviously, if you're pinch gripping it, that blade's gonna be really out there. And I think this blade will probably be good for many situations. You guys know I'm not a big blade guy. So this is definitely not falling into a wheelhouse that I'm super comfortable with, but it's a, still a great blade. Um, it has some weight reduction in the steel frame lock that it does have the holes in there. Let's talk about access to the lock bar. So if you look at it this way, there is no extra cutout to get to the locking mechanism. What they have done is they've chamfered out this area. So I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see in here, but they've actually chamfered this area and this of the lock bar so that you can get your finger in here a little bit easier to get into that area so that you can close the knife. They did the same thing here. So you can see how they kind of chamfered that area off um, so that when you're flicking it, your finger is going in there and it is nice and smooth actually. So when you're flipping it and your finger gets in here, there's no hot spots or anything. Speaking of hot spots, there are no hot spots on this. Even the clip, um, which is a deep carry pocket clip uh, with recessed, it's a recessed pocket clip, but the screws are not recessed. But if you look at the profile, they're almost down into that recessed area, which isn't gonna affect you in the pocket. And that ramp isn't too aggressive. So on the your back of your hand, it's really not digging into my hand whatsoever. So it is a really, really cool grip. And if you like big knives, then definitely check this guy out. And these guys are running, um, I wanna say about $70, somewhere around there. So basically, if you look at their website, um, this knife is listed for um, 1,195 Rand. So you have to take that and divide it by 16. Um, and it's right around $74, I wanna say. So you guys can do the math yourself. Um, and then shipping, I'm not really sure. I can't tell you what's gonna go on with shipping. Aldo over at Pickled Steel, you'd have to contact him and work it out from him what you wanna do and what he's gonna charge you for shipping. Obviously shipping international is probably gonna be a little bit more expensive but it's something that you're gonna have to keep in mind. Um, but this is an excellent knife. There is no play in the blade. There's no play in the blade even when it's not locked. Um, some people have been really critical of that area and you notice a lot of blades will do it, but this has no play whatsoever. Uh, the detent is somewhat light. I did notice that it doesn't take much for me to do it. So if I'm holding the knife like this, um, 
I don't know, I'll back up a little bit with the camera just so I'm not smacking anything. <laughs> but, all right, let's see. Let's see if I can back this up. All right, ready? So if I just slam it down, then I can pop this knife out. So it's just something, it, it's a, it is a good detent. Look, it's not gonna come out, but if I really flick my hand, I can get that blade to pop out, especially doing the drop like that. But anyway, honestly, this is a really cool knife. It is really, really cool. It's just very big for me. And I carried this in my pocket and it does disappear in the pocket and it gives you a nice profile in the pocket and it was not uncomfortable or anything like that. It's just way more blade than me personally, I would ever really need. So that are my thoughts and a little bit of information on the Pickled Steel Rhino. Excellent, excellent blade. So I'm gonna set that over here. Now let's talk about the Warhog. So this is the Pickled Steel Warhog. Um, let's you guys get a good look at that one. Uh, what we are talking, this one is D2 blade, which I like D2, but living here in Florida, D2 doesn't like me. And the reason for that is I, Basically, if I'm gonna carry a blade that's D2, I have to be really mindful. I work outside in Florida, so I'm sweating all day. And, you know, even something like the rat, which I used carried outside here in Florida, it didn't take long. And I'm hoping that you guys can see that. Um, right in this area, it started to get a little bit of rust and I've tried to work on getting rid of it. But um, it's just something that I have to deal with on a daily basis. And D2 doesn't have a lot of corrosion resistance. So let's talk about some of the specs on this knife. So let's talk about the length. So this one is about Ooh, let's see, seven and five eighths. It's about seven and five eighths coming in right about seven and five eighths. The blade is three and a quarter right for where my finger is. The sharpened area is just under three inches uh, actually of the sharpened area. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but this is a chunky blade. It is what I would consider a full, full blade. So fills your hand. You can see you got that nice finger choil right here. If you needed to choke up, it does have this area to choke up. It's a little awkward, uh, just choke it up, but you could do it and your thumb gets right there on top of the blade, or you can get back here and you have all this jimping for your thumb to be right here. Um, if you needed to pinch grip it, you could get up here on the tip uh, and get those cuts like that on the tip. Um, it is an access lock, which works extremely well. Again, action is great. Um, <laughs> it's actually amazing. So they did a really good job with that. And I think an access lock is something that a lot of companies are doing very well. I was corrected by the handle material. Thank you, Aldo and Gareth. This is aluminum with a micarta insert. So you got the green micarta insert and aluminum, the red aluminized little pivot collar on a steel frame. So you do have the steel frame on the inside, which is, um, let's look in there. Uh, there's no weight reduction in, oh wait, yeah, there is a little weight reduction on this side. Let's see if my camera will pick it up. Hold on. I get my flashlight in there. Let's see, All right. Yep, you can see it right there. There is some weight reduction. I'm using my i5D, my Olight. I uh, love that thing. So wire pocket clip. 
with a nice one screw, kind of a very good design. It can be used on the other side, which by the way, the Rhino again, the pocket clip can be put on the other side. Um, let's move this out of the way. Let me pull up the Warhog. I think the, the, um, the price on the Warhog is the exact same. It is the exact same for the Rhino. So it's the exact same price, but you're getting D2 steel. Let's do some size comparisons, shall we? We already broke out the rat, so you can see that versus the rat. Uh, very amusing. Um, <laughs> just, just the thinness of the rat versus how that is a beefy boy right there. And then this one will be funny too. And the reason I use these is because this is the kind of the wheelhouse knife that I like. But you can see on the rat and the elementum, let's put this here. The blade length is very, very similar. So the actual blade length matching, well, the sharpened blade length uh, is close. It's very close. But as far as thickness, <laughs> kind of dwarfs it. Now this next one might be a little bit different. So you can see what it looks like versus the pair of three. Uh, it's still a beefy boy. So again, this is a nice thick blade. Big hands could be, that would be great if you got really big hands. They even put some jimping over here on the pinky area so it doesn't slip out of your hands. So if you need a good work knife, man, this thing is gonna do it for you. Especially if you're not living in some real tropical climates, it's gonna be great. So the designer, let me pull it up just so I am not giving you guys incorrect information. Uh, the designer is Johan Jordan, who has designed knives for many different companies. Artisan Cutlery, I think Kaiser maybe, but he, I've seen this logo before and he has been working with several different companies. And for what I understand, this was a design that he submitted for when Kaiser was doing the Sheepdog. And obviously they went with somebody else. So he still had this design and now Pickled Steel is making his design. And it's a very good design. It's comfortable on the hand. Again, you're getting a full purchase on that thing, even back here, if you needed to choke up even better. But right here, and that thing is just a chunk, man. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, and as soon as you pull that, that bar, it's falling. So watch the guillotine of the fingers. I handed this to somebody and I had to warn them, hey, be careful on the lock. So they were they were good. It is one of those access locks that when you, if it's closed in the closed position and you pull it, the blade pops open. And that's just the way that this, this area is designed. When you pull this back, it comes back and it pushes against that blade and pushes it out. I have a SOG Terminus XR and it does the same Thing. So as soon as I push that bar out, it kind of does it. Where something like on a Benchmade, it's smooth and it doesn't push the blade out. But that's not a bad thing. It's just how they designed that blade. And this thing is super fun to play with. That is for sure. This thing is killer. So anyway, that is the Warhog. And this is... The Rhino. Both of them, excellent blades from Pickled Steel. I'll put the link in the description for both of these in the description of this video and Pickled Steel. Uh, these guys are great. Go check them out. I don't know what uh, our buddy Aldo over there can do as far as shipping, etc. for you guys, for these guys, but I definitely would recommend these and I'm hoping to get these into some other people's hands so that somebody else can maybe do a better job reviewing them than I do. So there's many other people that are doing much better reviews than me, but I'm, this is just my take on these knives. So thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment or not. That choice is yours.